Hey yo, another video from the insane crazy photographer. Um, I was gonna make this video anyway. Some other people asked me to make this video. They talk about well, there's two different uh, 135, so it's three. There's the DC Nikkor. I'll be interviewing that lens next week, going over a review of it. Um, as I told you, these lenses are 95% of what the $1,300. F2 uh, DC Nikkor is, but on the left we have the 135mm uh, AI version in 3.5 app aperture, and on the right we have uh, the same lens, 135mm and 2.8 aperture. Um, used all day long, typically $150, $200, typically like $150, $160. On the left, the 3.5. I can sometimes, I snagged one last week, another one last week for $60, so that was on a whim. I mean, I got that really cheap. Um, typically, you can grab these for $100, $120. Um, are you missing anything between the two? No. Well, I made the video uh, a week and a half ago recommending you the 2.8. Uh, I like the contrast of uh, the 2.8 better. I think the color saturation on the 3.5 is slightly better all the way open at 3.5 then uh, the 135 is at 2.8 uh, they're both balls on at f4 and above some assholes out there will actually tell you that uh, both are only equal at f8 well that's subjective I don't freaking see it I think they're crack smoking assholes or pixel peepers zooming into 600 percent and looking at what they can bitch about and there's tons of those asshole keyboard jockey motherfuckers out there on the internet so did you take a look at the size they both have built-in lens hoods, metal construction. Both these lenses are fucking awesome. Um, now the only advantage I can see of the 3.5, other than the price, typically about 60 bucks cheaper than the 2.8 is on the 3.5, is it's small enough to slam in your pocket. So if you want to take two lenses with you, although if you don't have some sort of little tiny bag, then I don't know what the hell you're doing. But uh, the 3.5 will fit in your pocket, pretty much. Um, I would actually take this off. I removed this off a few of my lenses so it doesn't rip my pockets open. So here we're on the left. We have the slightly smaller 135mm 3.5. And on the right we have, I think the difference in weight is uh, 303 grams between the two. The 3.5 and the uh, 2.8. They're both 135mm. Uh, they're both wonderful. They're not wonderful at all. Neither one of these lenses are wonderful. They're both fucking awesome. Not owning one is a cardinal sin. Um, and if you're on a tight budget, if you're not on a tight budget, I recommend the 135 uh, F2 uh, DC Nikkor for $1,300. But uh, even at the cheap price, money being irrelevant, even though I love that lens and you got front and rear, uh, front and rear bokeh control, it's, uh, it's rather subtle. I uh, do recommend one of these over, or in addition to, I've had actually a couple of people ask me, well, why the hell do I want these? I've got, I already have the 135mm uh, F2 DC Nikkor, well, so do I, so why am I packing these around? They're cheap, they're beaters, they'll fit in your pocket, and the fat F2 is more fragile. Yes, it's a slightly superior lens. But there is nothing that anybody's going to bitch about on a 20 by 30 print on FX body out of either one of these awesome fucking lenses. Um, another advantage too is on a uh, on a uh, DX camera, these are rough equivalent of 200 millimeter. So here you have a rough equivalent of a 200 millimeter uh, 2.8 for 140 bucks, and over here you have a rough equivalent of a 200 millimeter. Uh, 3.5 for uh, 90 bucks. Sometimes as cheap as 60 bucks. So, say, well, I have a nice, beautiful 200 millimeter equivalent DX lens. It's uh, also great for portraits. Another thing that these, uh, the advantage, I think I didn't think I talked about in the other video, is that if you actually bring up some examples, or I can post some examples, is that I cannot stand fucking portraits. Um, out of 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 lenses that looks like, uh, I call them iron faces. The portraits look like shit due to the nature of the optics and of the long telephoto zooms. Uh, I don't care if it's a $2,400, 2.8, 70 to 200 uh, Nikkor. I don't give a fuck if it's one of my favorites. The 
80 to 200 to 8 Nicole or my other lens that I have, the super quiet, the ever beloved 70 to 200 to 8 to Tamron with vibration control. I cannot stand the low contrast iron faces that those long telephotos produce. What do I mean by iron face? It means instead of the beautiful depth of field and just the beautiful rich reproduction that you get out of these or like an 85 millimeter or like a 180 millimeter 2.8 that I've told you about extensively. It looks like the portrait someone has ironed their faces flat. I call it iron face. It is unbecoming. Wedding photographers use the dog shit out of them. They'll do uh, portraits of someone standing behind an ocean or some other sort of cheesy, you know, iconoclastic, uh, hackneyed crap. And uh, people love them, but they do look like shit. They're just not beautiful. If you actually show someone a picture cropped in on the face of the same between one of these and uh, any, I don't care how fucking expensive the shit is, and I've got them all, I've used them all, you crop in the same, you make a uh, 11 by 17, 8 by 10 portrait print, say which one looks better to your eye, just make a snap judgment, which one looks better. They'll always pick these, or the 85 millimeters, or the 180s, or the 100 portrait millimeter, 100 millimeter portrait lens, over any of the uh, long telephoto zooms. Why? I call it iron facing. It's like someone ironed their fucking face, it just looks flat, it kind of looks like it came out of a high resolution copier. That's what the optics do. It just creates a low contrast. There's just no depth to the skin tone. There's no uh, depth of field on the facial features. There is, obviously, but far, far, far less. It looks shitty to me. Um, it's kind of become the norm. You kind of like people make fads out of stuff that really ultimately, in a uh, traditional sense, look like fucking shit. Like uh, photographers back in the 40s would go like, you know, that might be some expensive fucking glass, but that looks look like that looks like shit. You know. And it's true, I agree. So that's the one huge advantage I can't stand out of the long tellies for portraiture. As I told you, whether you pick the El Cheapy, cheap in price, not cheap in quality. The El Cheapy 35 135mm for 90 bucks used, sometimes as low as 60 or the typically $150, uh, $150 135 a 2.8. Both are excellent choices. I've got four of these and I've got three of these if you can believe that bullshit. Um, yeah, I'm kind of weird. I, I collect certain lenses that uh, I consider to be awesome. And these are not that expensive. And uh, once in a while you'll gift one to somebody. But anyway, here we have the uh, 30, uh, 35 135mm and the 2.8 135mm. Oh, the other difference is that, uh, actually if you read comments, and I don't agree with it, I see no difference at all, is that people talk about the better color saturation. Wide open at 3.5 is better than it is at uh, wide open at 2.8. And they can't figure out why. Well, that's because they're idiots. They don't know about lens technology, or they don't think, typically. But uh, I don't agree with that. I've really seen no difference. Uh, some people have reported that, but I have not seen it in comparing the two. In pixel peeping, and uh, the only plausible reason for that being is that the 2.8 has five glass elements in it, and the 3.5 has four. So you have four elements versus five elements. But I have not seen it. Um, both are neck and neck at 4, and both are identical twins at f8. Um, do you really technically need a 2.8? No, I recommended it to you in the other video, and it's still my recommendation, but if you're like, well, you know, you know, there's this asshole on YouTube, says I gotta buy this lens, but I don't know if I can front 80, 150 bucks, uh, then, then front 80 or 60 or 90 bucks and grab a 3.5, and, uh, you're like, well, maybe the bulk is not a good... No, it's perfect. It's awesome. It's just as awesome as the 2.8 is. It's even a little bit smaller. So, either one you get's fine. Um, I own several of both. And uh, Someone asked me to make this video, but I was actually planning on making it anyway. And uh, Send me any, any other video requests on anything you want me to fucking do. Because uh, I will whip it. And... Um, spank it and slap it for you and tell you what's good and uh, I've used it and I'll give you an honest assessment and if you like these videos you can always send me a buck or two and uh, I promise to put the money to good use you know I won't uh, piss it away on uh, 
Cheetos and, uh, and guacamole dip or something stupid like that. Uh, I'll uh, get some uh, oddball stuff to uh, show you guys. Or yeah, I pay for website hosting. I have a lot of files, uh, photography files that I upload and I give out to people for free. So I use that money actually to pay for hosting on a couple websites. So and uh, hosting on my website. So anyway, send me any video requests, and if I sound tired, that's because I haven't slept in 48 hours, and uh, it's uh, 7.30 in the morning, and that is the reason for that. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, but I am just flat-ass tired, and I need to get more sleep. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later in another video from my crazy ass on either something that I've got on my list, because I've got a lot of shit on the list to make, or another request that you send me. And i got to give a shout out to some people that have made some donations. I'm sorry I was too tired this evening to do it. I will do it on the next video, and I appreciate and kindly thank you. And if you were here, I would kiss your hairy ass right in the crack in thankness. I greatly appreciate that. Thanks so much. Catch you later.